What's up everyone, it's Prometheus. In today's video, we are talking all about latte art, but we're not going to be pouring it, we're going to be tasting it. And trying to answer that weird question, what does latte art taste like? Now, I know that sounds like some kind of new age feel goodery, but bear with me, let me explain. Way back in 2017, which now feels like a lifetime ago, Barista Hustle posted an article called Does Latte Art Make Your Coffee Taste Worse? And in that post, Matt Perger made some interesting observations about the way latte art can affect taste. Of course, it's easy to just scoff at this and move on with your day because when we look at latte art, it's on the surface, it's aesthetics. But the fact is, even beyond visual perception or personal bias, latte art does have an effect on taste. For instance, just think about the act of pouring latte art. All that milk foam displaces the crema and pushes it to the edges of the cup. This means crema creates a concentrated ring right where you take that all-important first sip, resulting in a more intense, sometimes bitter coffee flavor. But when you mix it all together, it creates a different experience, with a more balanced flavor as well as even texture. Inspired by this article, I set out to take it just a bit further and utilize the experiment that Matt laid out in the article on both coffee professionals and hobbyists. By taking the visual element out of the equation, would people's perceived visual expectations of quality be different than their actual taste buds? But before we dive in, let's meet our panelists. I've been in coffee for since 2010, starting as a barista, and then I worked in different shops, and then I got interested in coffee roasting, and I've uh, been roasting ever since. And I am the director of coffee for Lofty Coffee, which is a local San Diego coffee roaster. Um, I've worked there for about five and a half years um, and have a bit of coffee experience outside of that. I'm just a home consumer. I drink coffee first just to caffeinate myself most of the time, but after I got into some uh, good uh, cafes, I started really enjoying it. So I just do multiple pour overs, m multiple versions of pour overs at home. And yeah, I'm just a home consumer. I got into espresso about a couple months ago. Uh, got a gaja in April, um, but I don't have much experience as far as tasting goes. I just make it so that I can have caffeine in the morning. Coming into this experiment, I didn't really have any theories or expectations on what the outcome of this would be, but I was curious to see how and if time, experience, or expertise change your tastes, preferences, or expectations when it comes to what your latte, or in this case your flat white, should taste like. Before the tasting, I asked each panelist this series of questions. And they're designed to not be very leading, but to learn about their views on how to tell if a barista is skilled and how visual cues may change their initial impression of a drink's quality. Each of the panelists had some kind of preconceived notion as to a higher drink quality when latte art was present, albeit for a variety of reasons. As a coffee person, I'm like, oh, that's a newer barista, or oh, that person didn't try as hard, or, or they're in a rush. Latte art takes uh, a good amount of time to perfect, so I think that yes, the latte art is going to show the skill of the barista. And it makes me think if they can do good latte art, they probably can pull a good espresso shot. If I go to a cafe and the latte art is nice, I kind of don't think much about it. Generally, it's only if it's bad that I'm like, oh, maybe this isn't gonna be that good. So the question is, when we take away our ability to see and judge a drink by its latte art or just its aesthetics overall, will our personal preferences or perceived ideas of quality match our actual taste buds? To do this, each panelist was blindfolded and given a flat white with the same coffee and the same milk. The only difference is one had fully intact latte art and the other had been stirred up. They were also given a cup of steamed milk to reset their palate between drinks. After giving each panelist some time to sip the drinks, I asked them a series of questions like which had the best overall first impression, which had the best flavor of foam, the best flavor of liquid, and which drink overall would you prefer? Of course, the answers to these questions did vary a bit from panelist to panelist, but a lot of them were pretty consistent across the board. Probably the right. As far as like texture goes, like foam texture, I would think the one on the right. The one on the right, I could taste the espresso more. But throughout the tasting, there definitely was some unanticipated topics that came up that neither I nor Matt Perger had thought of. For one, the temperature difference between the stirred and the unstirred drink actually appeared to be noticeable, but could be chalked up to which was made first or a variance in the barista preparation. Also, during the tasting, a couple panelists even brought up they had an inclination to give higher marks to the first drink that they tried. But also why I'm thinking that is also it's the first one I tried. So like that first bit of coffee, first bit of milk. Well, I think 
this one, but it also could have been it's the first one I drank. Along with the unanticipated, there was the anticipated thing where every panelist did notice a difference in texture or layering between both of the drinks. Like this one felt like there was a top layer and then a bottom layer. The one on the left felt like it was one layer that was just generally thicker. The one on the left had a sort of a creamier texture. It seemed like this one had more foam and I'm not a huge fan of that. The first thing I actually noticed was that they both have a slightly different amount of foam. But when it came to the all important final question, which drink they preferred, there was a stark contrast between the professionals and the hobbyists. Both professionals preferred the drink with intact latte art. This one, it's a bit sweeter. Probably the right. And both coffee hobbyists preferred the drink stirred. Probably the one on the left. Yeah, this one over here, I would definitely finish it. Okay, so what does all this mean? Based on the results of this small group, I can speculate that maybe coffee pros expect that first sip to have a bit more bite based on the considerable amount of coffee they've had over their career and the aversion most coffee pros have to stirring up a brewed Banksy. On the other side of the coin, this could mean those in the earlier stages of their coffee journey or just consistent cafe customers preferred the stirred option due to a more balanced flavor and texture and maybe just apply a different level of value for latte art in general. Of course, when I set out to make this video, I wasn't looking to set the record straight or make a final determination on this topic. Just like Barista Hustle said in the original article, and like I've said multiple times before, a lot of times coffee comes down to preferences. But I think it's great food for thought, and it should make baristas think twice before staring daggers at customers who stirred up their milky masterpiece. This whole process, I think, is worth trying out for yourself, if just for anything, you know, for fun, to see where your preferences lie and to see if latte art is either helping or hindering your enjoyment of your coffee. And of course, before I wrap everything up, I wanna say a big thank you to Abby the Barista, Zach, Siri, Maurice, and Justin the Panelists, and of course, the one and only Sir James Alexander Hoffman for helping fund this production and allowing me to pay these people for spending a Saturday masked up in a warehouse during this hodgepodge of a production. So big thanks goes out to them. Anyway, that's it for me this week. Let me know your thoughts on Latte as a whole. And if you get a chance to test yourself out on this, let me know your results down in the comment section below because I'm curious to see where y'all land. And of course, I'll see y'all again back in familiar territory and the familiar format next week. And a big thank you to my March Patreons, Ads, Jacob P, David W, Christopher, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Obo, Andre, Sean, Noel, Spookus, Mika, Samantha, Bound Coffee, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew Horrison, Corey C. Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Thomas B, UK Espresso, Tim, Jason C, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Home Barista Coach, Testing123, Jerry, Matt, Zachary V, Tyler F, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, BJK Cafe, Chris M, Daniel P, Mike B, Brian M, Brandon B, Tyler M, Sebastian, Matthew C, JRC, Absolute, Stephen G, Alex T, Offensive, and Jose, and of course a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want the information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course a big thank you to you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Spermetheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.